this is Honors Algebra 2 Pre-Calc. We are starting Chapter 2 with this video on 2.1 Operations with Numbers. So before we start doing a bunch of operations with numbers, we should delve into the different kinds of numbers that we're going to discuss and also the abbreviations for those sets of numbers. So uh, in math, a set uh, is, is sort of a group of things, right? Uh, so you could talk about uh, even numbers as a set, right? Like 2, 4, 6, 8, right? Uh, you could talk about multiples of 3 as a set, right? Like 3, 6, 9, 12, etc, etc. Uh, you could talk about the numbers uh, less than, like greater than 0 and less than 10 as a set, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, so there's lots of different sets in math, right? Uh, but specifically, there's a bunch of sets that we use uh, later on when we do math, uh, math proofs and other things, um, but also that uh, a lot of the rules that we learn are only rules that work for certain sets of numbers and not others. So uh, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the abbreviations for these sets so that if we see them in a proof we would know what that would mean and that probably won't happen until way later in your math career but it doesn't hurt. Uh, and also talk about which sets are which. Okay so uh, let's start with the natural numbers. Sometimes they're called the counting numbers. Uh, the natural numbers start at 1, just like you would as a kid if you started counting, right? When you were really little and you started counting, uh, you didn't start at 0, you didn't start at like negative 7, that'd be weird. I mean, maybe you were a really precocious child, but realistically, probably you started counting as 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So those are called the natural numbers, uh, also sometimes called the counting numbers. The set abbreviation for all of these is this like cool looking uh, capital letter uh, that has like a double line for part of it, uh, but really honestly if you just used a capital N it would work. So uh, the abbreviation for natural numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. till infinity, uh, is N like natural. So that makes a lot of sense, it's probably not a big leap. Uh, the only difference between the natural numbers and the whole numbers is that the whole numbers have zero, right? So that's the only difference between the natural numbers and the whole numbers is that the whole number has zero. So 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. 4, 5, 6, 7, up till forever. Uh, and the abbreviation for that set is W, like whole, which again, totally logical and makes sense. Um, the next set are what we call the integers. So integers uh, are essentially the whole numbers but positive and negative, right? So uh, so in addition to having 0, 1, 2, 3 and, and up till forever, you can go in the negative direction and have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on forever. Uh, and these are called integers. Uh, the abbreviation for the integer set is not i, actually, because uh, we are going to see that there are other things that are used for i, uh, that i is used for. So so it's not i, it's z, uh, like zintiger. No, I'm just kidding. That's what I say because I can never remember the word, but I googled it. Uh, it's, it's actually from a German word called zahlen, which means number. Uh, in German. So I always joke that it's Z for Zintiger because that helps me remember it and I don't think that Zollen is a thing that would help me remember it since I don't speak German. Uh, but uh, so Z is the abbreviation for integers. Uh, that's going to matter a, a lot as we move forward. Um, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as P over Q where P and Q are both integers uh, as part of that Z set, right? Um, so what's worth noting here is that if you have a rational number that is written as a decimal, it's either going to terminate, meaning end, like 0.25, which is the same as one fourth, right? Uh, or it'll repeat, like 0.3 repeating, which is the same as one third, right? So both, uh, both of those are rational numbers, right? So as a decimal, a rational number either terminates, like 0.25 and ends, or repeats, like 0.3 repeating. Um, the next set is called the ir- oh, sorry, the, um, the rational numbers use the abbreviation Q. Uh, like quotient, and it doesn't use R, which you're probably thinking, but rational starts with an R because there is a bigger, more important set at the bottom of this page uh, that totally has dibs on R. Uh, so, so there is a set that encompasses all of these sets, right? There's a set that includes all of this, and that set uses R. So, so the rational numbers are Q, like quotient. So if you think about a rational number, it's a kind of division, uh, and so they get Q, like quotient, which is like division. Uh, Irrational numbers are essentially just not rational. The ear in front of the word rational means not. So basically they're numbers that do not fit this quality. What that's going to look like is it's going to be uh, a number that as a decimal does not repeat or terminate. So an example of an irrational number, right, would be something like pi or the square root of 2, right? Pi is 3.14159, da 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 da. It goes on forever and it does not repeat, right? Uh, root, uh, square root of 2 is 1.414, uh, da, da 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 and again, it goes on forever and it doesn't repeat. I know that looks like it repeats, but trust me, it doesn't repeat. Um, and sometimes these numbers look like they repeat for four digits, but then that falls apart and they don't. Okay, so again, this is not repeating, uh, so just to be clear, even if, in fact, we'll take off the four for a sec, uh, but, but neither of these, so they go on forever, right, and 
neither of them repeat. So forever, and they do not repeat. Sorry, computer went to sleep. Do not repeat. Um, and so the uh, irrational numbers are generally written with a P, uh, which makes zero sense, uh, but essentially R is already taken by this big set at the bottom that's going to matter, and Q was taken by the rational numbers. So, uh, I don't know, there you go, it's P, because P over Q, I guess. So, uh, real numbers are the big one that encompasses all of this, okay? So, real numbers describes all of these values. In fact, real, real numbers describe every number that does not involve uh, what we're going to learn to be the imaginary unit in a couple chapters called I. So for right now, every number that you are dealing with is a real number. So uh, any number I come up with is going to be a real number, and that's that uses that big R. And that's going to matter a lot, because a lot of the, the various things we're going to do in math, different theorems, different proofs, different rules, are only going to work for certain sets of numbers. Most of the rules that we're going to see work for uh, we're going to see a lot of like proofs and rules of things that work for real numbers are natural numbers n and uh, integer uh, integer numbers z right so that's that's the ones you're going to see most of the time I had to look up that the irrationals repeat I'm going to be honest I could have told you all the other ones uh, but I you don't really do very many proofs with irrational numbers the honest answer is there are very few proofs specifically for irrational numbers there are proofs for real numbers but real numbers would include all of this anyway so because real numbers include all of these. Um, there, you're not going to see a lot of cause to use P's and Q's most of the time. There are going to be occasionally times that that's the case, but most of the time uh, any theorem or anything you see is going to be true for all real numbers, or maybe for all integers, or maybe for all natural numbers, but that's, that's usually the deal. Um, cool, so what we're going to do in a quick first example is we're going to identify uh, a couple numbers in as many ways as we possibly can. So uh, you can use the shorthand, you can also write it out uh, if you want to write the word real, you can, but if you just want to use that capital R, you can. Okay, so what we're going to do in our example one, in example one, uh, I'm going to ask that you identify, so I'm just going to say ID uh, each number in as many ways as possible. And we're going to do the same thing in P1. I'm just going to write same because I'm going to be super lazy. Uh, and I'm just going to give you a bunch of numbers. B, C, E, and E. Those obviously aren't numbers. That's where I'm going to write the number. I'm, I mean, I guess they could be if they were a variable expression, right? But I'm not getting all tricky here. All right, so uh, I'm going to give you some numbers, and we're going to identify those numbers in as many ways as we possibly can. Um, let's see. Let's do uh, 2. Let's do negative um, let's do 3.5, um, let's do, uh, um, I'm going to do 1.2000200000, um, and I'm going to do 1.22, uh, we'll do two, one, repeating. Cool. Let's give it a try. All right. Uh, and then uh, on the other side, I'm going to give you a, uh, let's do uh, 2.511, Let's do um, negative... Three point eight. Um, we'll do a twenty-five, and uh, let's do eight thirds and negative one. Okay, cool. So we're going to walk through and identify these in as many ways as possible. I'm going to do that in orange. Okay, so the first thing you could totally cheat on is every single one of these is a real number. So if you wanted to be a lazy bum, you could be like, cool, all of them are real. I'm just going to go ahead and do real for all of them because they are, right? Um, every number that we know right now is real. Okay, so let's think about this number two. Okay, so that was, that was a lazy cheat. I knew they were all real. I just did that first. Okay, so the number two is a counting number, right? One, two. So it's a counting number, which would be a natural number, right? 
Uh, it's also a whole number because whole numbers are just the natural numbers that have a zero, right? Um, it is also a, a it is also an integer, right? Sorry, sometimes I put the double line in the wrong spot. Nobody really cares where you put it. Um, and it also seems to be a rational number, right? It is not irrational because you can't be both rational and irrational. Uh, this is a decimal that stops. It's two point nothing, right? Uh, the other way to think about it is it's two over one, right? But either way, so it's all of these things. That's a lot, right? All right, let's talk about uh, negative four. So negative four is not a natural number because it's not positive. It's not one of those numbers we're counting. It's not a whole number because whole numbers are zero and the positive integers, right? It is a, an integer, so I'm going to put z for z integer, uh, and it is a fraction. It's a negative four over one, which would make it a rational function or a rational number rather. So okay, so there we go. All right, uh, three point five. It can't be any of these natural or whole or integer because it's got this extra decimal, right? 3.5. Uh, if it helps you to see that this is the same as a seven halves, great. You don't have to um, because since it is a terminating decimal, it has to be rational. So it's going to be a real number and a rational number, which is R and Q. Um, now, just because this thing is predictable, like I can guess what the next set of numbers are, right? I have 1.2020200. I'm guessing the next number would be two and then four zeros and then two and then five zeros. Just because I can guess what's going to happen doesn't mean that it's the same as repeating. So this is going to be one of those irrational numbers, right? Um, it's not terminating, because see the dot 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 means it goes on forever, and it's not repeating. It does have a pattern, but pattern and repeating are not necessarily the same thing, right? Uh, and then for the last one, uh, I know that I can rule out all of these guys because of the decimal, and because it is a repeating decimal, this is going to be a rational rational number, right? So I get R and Q, okay? Uh, if you want to try P1 without me, go ahead and hit pause. I'm going to do P1 right now uh, in purple. So uh, again, if you want to cheat, all five of these have an R, right? They're all real because right now we're only dealing with real numbers. Okay, so um, a is actually the most straightforward. It's the same as this one down here, where I have a decimal that does not terminate and does not repeat. Even though there's a pattern, it does not repeat. That's going to mean it's an irrational number, right? So that's that's it for those. Negative uh, 3.8 is not any of these guys, n, w, or z, because it has this decimal after the 3, right? But it is going to be uh, a rational function, or a rational number rather, because uh, you could write this as a fraction. You could write it as 30, negative 38 over 10, right? Or you could simplify it if you want, and negative 19 over 5. Point being, uh, it is a terminating decimal. It ends after the, after the 8. So there you go. 25 is all of these things, right? So 25 is going to be the same as up here, where we had 25 is a counting number, it's a whole number, it's an integer, and it's rational. So, uh, so I get my n, my w, I'm always really bad at these double lines. Uh, my Z, nobody really cares. And there you go, Q. Um, eight thirds is already written as a fraction, right? It's not going to be any of these things because it doesn't simplify to a nice, happy uh, number in front of a decimal, right? So eight thirds is just going to be R and Q, right? Uh, and negative one is going to be a real number. It's not a natural number or a whole number, though, and then it'll be an integer and a rational number. So we're going to have a z and a q, OK? So that's classifying uh, or identifying numbers in as many ways as possible. Here's the thing. No one's actually going to make you do this uh, as the big skill, right? Like, this is not a skill that takes a lot of work. It takes knowing the definition of each one of these sets. So why does this come in handy? Well, because sometimes especially moving forward in a class like calculus, you're going to be asked to uh, apply a theorem, and sometimes that theorem might not apply based on certain numbers, right? Like you might say, hey, I can't do that because this, no this theorem only works for, for natural numbers, and I'm not looking at a natural number. I'm looking at negative 1, which is not a natural number. So, um, you know, that's the logic behind it, right? So, so what I want you to be aware of is that as we move forward, knowing which sets are which and what defines them is going to matter, uh, but you're probably not going to be asked to just straight up identify numbers in as many ways as possible. So sometimes the skills that we do in class to practice are not the same skills that we're going to see when we actually have to apply them later. Okay, uh, cool. So we'll stop this video here, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and get your next video ready, which will be the properties of real numbers, because pretty much moving forward, we're doing a lot of stuff with real numbers.